So DeepSeek is getting very popular with its impressive capabilities and the fact that it presumably costs a lot less to train than all one models, but there are other cheap thinking models in town. For example, Gemini 2.0 flash thinking with impressive reasoning capabilities as well and long context understanding. So in this video, I'll show you how to deploy DeepSeek on Google Cloud, how much that's going to cost in terms of infrastructure. I'll show you some benchmark results to compare the performance and do some vibe check on Flash versus DeepSeek. So if you want to deploy DeepSeek on Google Cloud, this is how you do it. You go to the model garden and you search for the DeepSeek model and you're going to find the DeepSeek R1 available in here. And then in the deploy options, you choose Vertex CI. This is working through the Hugging Face integration. And you can note here that this is actually a distilled version of the model, the 70B parameter size, not the full model for the time being at least. And note that it requires eight NVIDIA L4 GPUs. So you can choose the advanced deployment option if you want to use reservations. If you have that in Vertex AI to pay a cheaper price for this infrastructure here, you can also choose the virtual machine provisioning model between standard and spot. But let's go with the basic settings here. And we can see here the specs of the machine that's going to run this model. It's going to be a G2 standard 96 with eight GPUs. And all you have to do here at this point is to click on deploy and it will take a couple of minutes. After that, you'll see the deployment ready here to access your endpoint. You can navigate here within Vertex AI down to the online prediction section. And here you're going to see your endpoint. And if you scroll to the right here, you're going to see a simple request where you can see here how you would use your own deployment uh, of that model. There's a simple curl request here, but you can also check the Python SDK usage and the parameters you need to provide to access your model. So how much would that cost if you were to run that for a full month? So if we check the price for the instance in US Central 1, and then the price for the GPU and the fact that we have eight of those and consider them running at all times during a full month, you would have about $14 an hour, which would amount to $10,337 a month, which is quite a lot of money. For reference, if you were to use Gemini 1.5 Pro, which is a more expensive model on Vertex, in order for you to reach that $10,000 a month, you will need to input 8.2 billion tokens to the Gemini API. Now, obviously, DeepSeek has an API as well. So if we want to do an apples to apples comparison here, you can check the prices. Do note that this is per uh, tokens and not characters, like Vertex AI prices things. So if you do the math here, you see that this is about half of the Pro model currently and about seven times the cost of the current Flash model. Now, nobody knows what the flash thinking model is going to cost at the moment. It's in preview, so it's free. But if he has the same price as flash, that means that DeepSeek is going to be seven times more expensive. And if it is the same price as pro, then DeepSeek would be a little bit cheaper, but that's to be defined. In the chatbot arena, flash thinking is in the first position, as you can see here, and DeepSeek R1 is in the third position or also first as a tie with style control. Here in the live bench, we have DeepSeek R1 a little bit ahead of Gemini 2.0 flash thinking. And another useful benchmark is the simple bench, which doesn't include flash thinking yet. We can see DeepSeek R1 in here in six and Gemini experimental travel six in the fifth position. And that one has a somewhat similar performance to flash thinking. I personally always look at these three benchmarks because these are benchmarks that are unlikely to make it into the training data set used by the model. So there's no contamination in the evaluation results. So you can more or less trust that the results you see here are good proxies to how these models perform in the real world. So anyway, let's do a vibe check just to see how these two models fare against each other. I'm going to start with flash thinking here, which you can see at the moment it is free as it is in preview. But do note that there is a rate limit of only 10 requests per minute. So great for personal use and experimentation, but not appropriate for production usage. I'm going to ask Flash Flinking to develop an app that is similar to Readwise. It's an app that is simple enough that they can probably do it, but it has enough complexity to be interesting. 
So this part of the video is not sped up at all. We can see that the response is really fast. It thought for about seven or eight seconds, and now it's spitting out the response here. And we can see very verbose and elaborate answer here with the code snippets uh, for Python Flask app. So that includes a backend and a small front end with HTML and JavaScript. And you can expand the thoughts section here to see the internal planning and thought process that was used by Flash. So unlike all one models, the thoughts are explicit here, so you can explore them to see how the model arrived at the uh, solution. So as you can see, it's fairly comprehensive here. But now let's do the same with DeepSeek. So I'm gonna ask for exactly the same prompt here. It thought for about 47 seconds. And you can see the thoughts in here as well. What is interesting about DeepSeek is that the thought process is quite human. You can see things, for example, like, wait, maybe the user doesn't want that. And it's actually kind of funny to read. Um, but after all that verbose thought uh, output, you can see here the code. It was a little bit deeper and more comprehensive of a, of a solution here, including a database and all that, a registration process. It didn't work in the end. I'm getting this error in the registration process and I tried to ask DeepSeek to solve it and it didn't really did it. Uh, but in the Flash solution here, you can see it's a bit simpler, but it does work right out of the gate here, uh, as you can see right here. So anyway, I'll let you be the judge of how well it works for you. This was just one single example. And I think it's worth noting as well that obviously DeepSeek is an open source model that you can download and fine tune it fully and, and host it in your own servers. So there's a lot to be said about that. It's a true gift to the AI community. So there is that. But if you are concerned about data privacy issues with the whole set chat app that I just showed, then you may want to deploy it on Google Cloud. And I hope this video was useful to let you know how you can do that. Thank you for watching.